G'day, Michael here. I'm um, just trying to pull together a video to explain what I do with using a 2D scanner to produce a three-dimensional object. Now this is a flat footprint of a, it's actually just for a, a coffee mill. But what I want to do is make kind of a, an extended bowl. The other kind of uh, design that I've used this principle for is for fans. I'll just grab one. Okay, so looking at this fan, this is a bit tricky. It's not actually circular. It's, it's not actually elliptical. It's not a spiral. It's just kind of lumpy and awkward. And I needed to uh, digitize this design for a, one of the print heads I designed. I'll just grab one of the print heads. Okay, so you can see that funny shape cut out there. I had to get that shape so that uh, I could create this socket for this fan to go into. It's a bit hard doing this all at once. I'll be going to screen recording in a second on the computer, so it's a bit a little shaky. But basically I need this profile and I intend to make a bowl out of it. So what I'll do is I'll record the process on the screen um, on the computer showing what I actually do. So for the moment I'm going to clear this off. It's an Epson all-in-one machine, it's basically an A3 scanner. But um, as you'll see, we can use 2D scanners a lot for preparing designs for 3D printing. Um, most people have got a, a 2D scanner, one way or another, whether they've got a little all-in-one office machine like this, or you might have a dedicated scanner or whatever. But a 2D scanner is quite a useful tool for creating shapes. Anyway, let's move on to the actual screen. Okay. So I think the best process now is, well I prefer to use a photo editor because it gives me some control over the image contrasts. And what we'll get when we scan, I'll just uh, do the scan. Create, same. Got a couple of network devices, I'll use that one. Okay, so we'll have issues with the shadowing because that little um, shape has got like a, a chamfered edge it's going to be furry on edges. Like, I'll show you what I mean in a second. The fan that I showed you earlier is uh, a little bit easier to scan because it's got crisp square edges. So it's much easier to find the edge. Now there are a number of problems with this design. Um, just wait for this thing to come in. We'll draw a box around what we want to scan. Okay, that'll be enough. Let's scan that. Now the 300 dpi should be in enough detail. We're actually going to generate vectors from this anyway, so we're not going to have pixeled edges. Now, this design was also sort of an engineering design when they created it as part of the coffee mill, so I'd be surprised if they aren't arcs. Um, but in any case, this scanning method will let us do shapes that are not arcs in nature. But we do have more restrictions on our manipulations if we do not have arcs. So there's a couple of things we can do. In any case, we've scanned that, we're in GIMP. Now, there's the uh, menu up, at, up the top, and also the right click does the same thing. So what we can do is um, we'll just tweak the contrast. Now there's two methods. When I'm dealing with, dealing with photos, generally I use curves. I'll just demonstrate how that works. Now this thing's showing you what's called a histogram. Now what's to the left of the image is the dark, and what's to the right of the image is the light. Now here we have kind of a, I don't know, a, about a 30% gray. And here we like about a 90% grey. And if you come about 30% in, that's what that lot is. That represents this area. And this 90% grey represents this black looking area. It's not quite black, it's just a dark grey. Okay, so if I was to move this, the, the, the right hand edge and the left hand edge represent the limits of dark to light. So a dynamic range of the image. If I bring that in, it'll make the, the dark grey at that point there, whatever was dark grey to that point is now black because that edge of the you know, dynamic range is now clipped to that. And if I bring the right hand edge, which represents white, is brought to the left of that grey area, which was around outside here, it becomes 100% white. Everything to the right of here is now 100% white. So we keep going until we get quite a trimmed edge. And you can see, obviously, this little area here, you can hardly see, represents a lot of these bits that have just turned white. So if I move a little bit back over that way, we can keep a fair bit of our dark. Now the trouble we have here with keeping that dark is there's a shadow. Like just um, Let's just 
push out a bit further so you can see the shadow appear. So here's the edge of the actual object and that's actually a shadow artifact because the, the lighting for the scanning is designed for, for scanning flat images. But so you can see there, the real outline is here and yet we've got this shadow which makes it look like it's wider. So perhaps I'll actually leave it this ghastly um, speckly effect because our brains can interpret these edges. Even though the, the image detail is pretty lousy, our minds are able to interpret, kind of read between the lines, or between the dots here in this case. So let's go OK, and we'll have that um, set. So I'll zoom out, press the minus key a couple of times, and you can see that's, that's the way we've got that done. Now if I use the other method, I'll show you the uh, colours and the levels. Now here you can say, well, you can use a dropper to say, well, this bit black, then you've got what's meant to be in the middle of the range, and then you can use a dropper for this bit white. Okay, so I'll say, well, this bit here is what I want white. And you can see it's already adjusted the image to that being white. And you can see it's, there's the same sort of histogram we saw in the curves. Now, if I go, okay, this is what black is. Okay, so everything that was that sort of color is now black. And so we've got this, this crisp edge. But as you can see, we've lot, we still don't see that edge. So I might just manually grab that and bring it across. And you can see we have the same problem. It's the same effect, same problem, same solution, just different ways of getting there. I don't care, let's call it that. We can switch back to curves. Um, yeah, well, let's just do that. Right, now, this is a photo editor. Now, a photo is no use to us when we're trying to do 3D printing because we need actually a shell. And we're starting with a 2D object, so if we get an outline of this, it actually won't mean anything. We have this photo, it won't actually mean anything. We've got to make it have a third dimension. Now, to do that, there's a couple of different methods. Um, probably the easiest tool to get rolling is something like Inkscape or uh, maybe Adobe Illustrator or you know, one of those sorts of programs. Uh, let's just see. I've got Inkscape on this machine. But anything that can work with both photos and vectors at the same time will do the job. So Illustrator, Inkscape. Inkscape's free and open source. Um, free and open source are not the same. Open source means uh, free as in speech, not just free as in beer. So here we go. Let's import that image. Documents. I can give it a name, so I better save it. Now I've done this already once, so I'll save it as just as a rehearsal. So let's no, not save again. So I've got to export it. I'll call it map. That'll do fine. Replace it. So let's do that. Okay, where's Inkscape on that desktop? Okay, here we go. The map.jpg. I'll get it to embed here so we can actually handle it inside this this um, this side of this program. Right, so let's just zoom in. Press the plus key a few times to zoom in, and we can see that little furry artifact edge. Right, so what I'll probably do, um, if the image was clean enough, which this is not, but if it was, you could scan it and use. Um, trace bitmap. You'll have something similar on Illustrator or Corel Draw or whatever you're using. Um, so you'd pick a kind of a threshold of the number of number of colours. I might just drop that down to maybe two or three. Let's just see if we get a live update so it looks like. That's kind of what it will look like. Let's go OK and hopefully it won't uh, create more than five million nodes. It'll be quite busy. Oh, it's very busy. get it to stop, not listen to me, probably won't. If it's too busy, the machine will just be working its heart out. Um, yeah, very complicated. Because all these little speckles, it'll be drawing outlines around every little speckle. Okay, what have we got? We got there. So if I grab that guy and move this to the side, that's the original photograph, and if I click on the node edit, you can see the bajillion nodes, and it's really keeping this machine quite busy. Okay, so 
using this kind of trace only works when you've got like a clean image where you've got a nice defined edge, none of this furry edge business, and not heaps of speckle. So this is where the limit of tracing happens. I mean, we can, you can tweak these cutoffs. Uh, you can probably, in the photo editor, clean up the speckle, um, or you can go and manually select a certain number of these nodes, wait for it to catch up, and go delete, and it'll be busy as hell. I'll just close that window. Any time now. Uh, I can wait and let it do all this manipulation, or I can just force quit and kill the program. I'm going to force quit, because we can see how difficult that will be to use. Import. Get that map again. Okay. Now it's actually quite easy to draw around. Let's just use this um, Bezier Curve tool. Now I'll zoom in so I can see the detail that I need to see. We we'll go from here to there. I'll just zoom out a tad. Now you're going, what? What are you doing? Why are you missing out on these other points? Get back in again. I'm going to call that the corner. And I'm going to call that the corner. And I'm going to call that the corner. That the corner. It'll all make sense in a second. That doesn't look right. Did I get that right? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so we've got that. Let's just go to the node edit tool. And well, it's hard to see. Should be able to grab that curve if it listen to me. Oh, there's a curve there. I might change the colour of it if I can. Can I do that? Oh, kind of. That worked. Alright, so. So I should be able to grab that. Drag him out. Grab that guy. See, I've got imperfections, but I'm very quickly able to resolve them. Okay. Now, if we click on the actual node itself, we get these sort of curve editing nodes. I might just make that node fill so I can see what's in it. Okay, so you can see how that's created these bits and bobs. Now, we can make sure that all lines up beautifully. Oh, I can't see that. So, let's edit our that business there is editing the there we go stroke paint well I'll make it I don't know red will be fine so now we can see the stroke paint right so I'm gonna go like that now if we zoom in there you can see the edge artifact there is not quite right but we'll get it right we'll just give that more So I think that's fairly accurate. That's fairly accurate. This here needs a bit of tweaking. Let's do that. Okay. Now, unfortunately, the way the, like Vericad is my 3D package, the way it works, I don't have a really good way of manipulating these curves in Vericad. It will import them and kind of use them, but leave me with very few options as far as how I can manipulate them, because it is designed for like engineering shapes. Cylinders, cones, uh, rectangular prisms, that kind of thing. But it's not designed for these kind of you know, art artistic organic type shapes. Okay, so that seems to be a pretty good representation of that shape. So let's save it as. I'll save as DXF and I'll just call it, yeah, drawing one, that'll be fine. Let's call it that. Yep, don't care, that's fine. All right, so let's, this is one I prepared earlier. So I'm aiming to produce something like that. But this is done with a million segments. The trouble with the million segments 
is that they become very unruly to dry and if I want to manipulate them I want to do a chamfer or something it's not happy so we can't, we can't use them like that and I do it on the outside it's done something but not what I want it to do because there are too many segments the chamfers are too big for no not the chamfer the, the filler is too big for the segments so handling it in segments is far for a start it's very complex you can see all those points everywhere and those segments are too small for you know handling of the chamfer and if you try and do a chamfer or a fillet or something or the whole lot of goes oh my god don't know what to do I can't do the mathematics the fillet you've asked for is bigger than the segment blah 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 so all right let's go back to the 2d view now this is what I imported before on this design just they're all done in a million segments so I'm just going to delete that I'll leave that where it is let's import the one I just created which is called drawing dash one I'll just insert it Definitively. So there's our shape. Doesn't look quite right there, does it? Go back to the steps, what's going on? Is it right? Might be. I'll keep rolling with that anyway. Okay, so let's extrude that. It just doesn't seem right to me. Height of solid. We'll just make it the. Um, Actually, I might make it say uh, 25. Select profiles to extrude. Draw, oopsie. Draw a box around it. Right click. Now we pick the left edge. And this is now the x axis angle. Might move that L square. I don't know, 200. So that's what I've just created. Now, again, this is done in curves, not in um, arcs so I'm not sure that Vericat will be very good at using this so let's do a shell I don't know, on that one a 4mm will that do? it will ok let's undo now will it do a shell between that and that it did wow that's working well undo again so if I go to do a shell, that way, that way. Vericad is problematic with doing this stuff, so I'm surprised this is actually working. But every program's got its limits, so I don't hate it. Inconsistency. Okay, so it's not happy with something. And this is kind of what I expected. Okay, maybe if we get ourselves a fillet in some of these corners, just see if Vericat will be happy doing that, because it may not be. It is designed for circular arcs and things. Oh no, let's try that. Yep, it worked. It worked. I am surprised because it really normally doesn't like this kind of thing. I don't do all of that. So I want bigger radius corners, I think. Okay, so I'll do champ. No, fill it again. This time, I'll just click, select all those edges. Which I might even do something a bit better for us. Make that a different colour so I can recognise what I'm doing. Let's make that that. So we've got a white ray. Let's do that. Okay. That edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge. And I'm going to make it uh, no, five. It did it. Excellent. It did it. So now let's try this shell. I've got to select each shell individually, try each um, surface individually.
five mil radius, so it should be able to do a, a four mil. Actually, it might, it might make it a three mil shell. Okay. Couldn't do it. All right. Okay, so that's the offending one. Unable to copy curve. So it's not happy with something there, but okay, let's. Uh, cancel. Do that again. I might do them one by one. It didn't like that, I think. It's that one I didn't like. That is a pain. And that's kind of what I expected. These these curves are not happy being manipulated by well very is not happy manipulating these curves right so how would we overcome that well we'll go get another program i like using a, a qcad for 2d manipulations let's just do that there's drawing one what i'll do is i'll use a three point arc so it's uh, that guy pick a point on the end, point in the middle, point on the end, and it turns it into an arc. So I'll do that here too, because we know the middles were right, I've paid attention to that detail. So again, middle, end. And they actually look like a better curve anyway, those species weren't quite right. And draw a couple of lines to join these things together. So what we're going to do then, that. I might, okay that was on layer one, so I'll just blank that, select everything here, and delete it, that was our original, layer zero has got our arcs, okay so with a bit of luck that will import well into very good, let's just save that guy, save as, and I'll just call it drawing two drawing to so you can see that that's the mess we have there let's go back to 2d and sort another object to file file there we go two okay so that there is done in arcs and that should be a little bit more CAD friendly so let's try that box, right click, left click, left click, I'll just do that across another oh, about 200, that would be fine. Now let's see how that shell works, let's just see if that'll behave itself. Can I do this? Or will I have a fit? Not even game enough to try the bottom now, so there we go. It did it. So the moment we had circular arcs instead of organic shapes, Vericat had no trouble processing it. So I might just um, now delete the center bit. Just delete that. Okay, so now we've got that cleaned up shell. What I'd like to do is put some rounded edges so they're a bit easier to maintain for cleanliness and so forth because it is going to be well, it's basically a food device. So let's just do some um, fillets like that, 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 radius. Maybe let's do six. Not happy with one of them for some reason. Let's see what's wrong. Maybe. Ah, that might have been too small a signal, so I'll undo that. Cancel. Might have to make that a smaller. Thing. Cool. That worked. It couldn't fit a six mil fillet one way and a six mil fillet the other way in the same space. That's okay. I can live with that. Now I'll just pick that surface. See if we can get that. 
Let us pray. Not happy. Cancel. Undo. Okay, so let's try that again. A little bit annoying. Three. Oh, come on. <coughs> Do one at a time now. Let's just see if we can get it there. complex. Pain? Very annoying. Maybe I'll try another couple of bullets there. Okay, it worked. So I do. What's annoying me is I have to work around the quirks of the, the program. I really dearly love it if it will work better. You know, bump that up to six millimeters. No, that way, please. Beautiful. Okay, so there was to do with the corners not being tidy. Right, that one. Let's try it now. Let's see where I can go over. Okay, do that. Yes, and there we have it. So we do have to work around the limitations of the program with how the corners interplay with those digitized curves. If you're working from a solid like a cylinder or a, a rectangular prism or a cone or whatever, those manipulations work fine. But because we've come from a bit of a wild design, the uh, engineering type programs have a bit of a problem. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's just whack that on a slicer and see what we come up with. So there's. No, oh, so actually, I might save it to my. Uh, as an STL. Load into a slicing package. Yeah, that'll work. Which I might go to prison. Do it all. No, we'll print it on the delta. It's a dollar fill in it. Delete all. Add. Printing. There's a button over on. There he goes, and that. Probably the wrong orientation. Oh no, that's right, arrange. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Check that the slicing's good. I should want that bottom to be solid, so I'll increase the number of layers. Top and bottom, Good settings. Yeah. As it goes through those layers, it should all be solid. Yep. The walls aren't that important. Okay. 
So that'll be a nice solid bar. Let us pray. So I'll export that to the G code. Map.g code, that'll look cool. Now let's upload it to the printer. Uh, yeah, let's bring that over here so that's what I'm doing. Map.g code. So let's upload it to the printer. And away we go. Just going to start heating the printer. And with a bit of luck in the near future, we'll spit it out. Okay, so you can see the, the printer printing on the right hand screen. I've now got the whole um, whole workspace being recorded, so if it looks a bit weird, yeah, that's just how I operate. Okay, so on the right hand screen there, you can see the, the plan view looking down on the um, the Delta printer. And you can see on the left here, I've got the slicer. I'm gonna be running out of filament pretty soon, um, but this should be enough to test whether the footprint is correct and it'll be enough to um, uh, you know, test whether I like the design at all. Alright, so you can see here that there is a bit of a change in the layer height. What I've done here is used a feature that's fairly new in, in um, this one? Uh, print settings. Yes, use adaptive slicing, 75%. So what I'll do, let's have a look at the plate up. You can click on the object and check layer heights. And you see kind of a profile. As it where it sees more detail, I've got like I've got rounds uh, in the design. I'll just uh, with the bottom edge has got a round, and then um, then it's vertical sides, and it does it in, in larger layers. Then we get another round, a whole lot of rounds on the inside. So to improve the quality, they they uh, have it so it reduces the layer height, so it's generating more layers. So it spends a bit of time on making a finer job of it. But as we've just got the vertical, then it bumps back out to the layer height that I've specified. I've specified 0.3, but it spends a lot of time around those curves. You can see there, um, at 0.15, which is half the layer height. If I wanted to, I could manually specify layer height tables and we look at parts, yeah, yeah. And uh, this, this parts area here is also where you have to handle perhaps two different materials two different colours or whatever. Now the, you, know, you can see the Delta is actually running pretty quickly. I'll zoom in a bit more. That's pretty busy. Alright, so that's that. The adaptive layers are a good way of handling those curves. I probably could have just left it at my 0.3 layer height because I don't really care how good this one comes out. I just want to see it for size and, and design concept. But if it's good, I might just keep it as is. All right, so that's that been created. And you can see actually how you get this triangular effect of each facet. And that's actually how the SDLs are created. They're in little triangles. You probably see the same sort of thing. Well, any, any 3D uh, program will tend to work with these triangles because that's how shells are generally oops, that's how general, generally shells are handled. Oops, right down there. You can see with the, the, the fillets. Yeah. So I'm hoping that'll come out nice. But it's not that important but this one does. Okay, so this is the mess making machine in the flesh. Here's the mat in situ that came with the machine. My tray is intended to go into this space, but I'm about half a millimetre over size. Uh, I've set my printers so that they print about 1% over size to compensate for the shrinkage on various plastics. And I think that's all there is to it with this. This is a product called PLA, PLA Plus by 3D Phillies. And it doesn't seem to shrink obviously as much as say some of the ABS and that kind of thing does. All right, so I've got a couple of approaches here I could take. I could um, scale it down in the slicer, you know, 1%, or maybe take it down in the CAD program, 1%. Or I could just use this mat underneath and sit this guy on top. Can't quite decide. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. But in any case, you can see that part was originally uh, fitting in design with very little error. And the little bit of error that is there 
is easily overcome by a small tweak. Okay. Well, all right, so you've seen how I create this sort of weird shape using the scanner as my reference tool. It can be very, very hard to measure these shapes. So I hope this has been of use to you, of interest to you. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.